first question out of anybody's mouth when they first hear what I study is why? I mean, are you serious? Th there's no money in spiders, you know. Right. <laughs> so, to tell my story, I have to start at the very beginning. My dad would bring home big animals like, like turtles, so I won't be scared of animals. My grandfather, on the other hand, he loves small animals, like insects. With me, he was very patient. I had to spend and look at the butterfly, I had to look at the grasshopper, I had to look at the, the tadpoles. But, and, and on a weekend, the zoo was a must. So I knew from an early age, zoology was for me. So when I came to UE, I was in heaven. I mean, a degree totally in animals, that's for me. So by, by my second year, I, I wanted to know like, which, which animal do I like? I narrowed it down to I wanted to do either insects or birds. After a research project in summer, I realized the only bird I really liked was Tweety. <laughs> so, insects. I was going to do a master's in insects. I went to my supervisor and he, he put things in perspective. You can't learn everything. You may love everything, but you can't learn everything. You have to choose one, and what you choose is going to be your career, what you're going to devote your life to. So I went home, I looked through books, and you know what? There are a lot of entomologists around. But I remember he said that, you know, nobody's done anything on spiders, especially in the Caribbean. So, I mean, there's, there's a need. I'm going to fill it. I'm, I'm going to be um, our acknowledgers. But my story wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention my other passion, which is environmental education. And my influence for this wasn't my parents. It wasn't a lecturer. Actually, Michael Jackson. And the story behind that is that when I was little, I saw his video for Man in the Mirror. And I thought that was such, I mean, I am stuck in this ugly world. And I have so many more decades here. I am so screwed. So I have to do something. And, and I do. I actually write a weekly environmental column. Um, on environmental matters for Environment Tobago. But the other question that a lot of people ask me is that why study Trinidad, um, spiders in Trinidad? I mean, you're smart, you can go away, you can go to a university with a lot more um, um, facilities and, and machinery and all that stuff. And the simple answer would be there's a lot here. And let me just give you a little background about spiders. They are actually found in all terrestrial ecosystems ex except Antarctica. They're smart, they don't go where it's cold. And all these pictures I took. So that's St. Kitts, that's from um, St. Vincent. And yes, there are spiders on the beach. And the, the rest are from Trinidad. Now, Trinidad, we are lucky. We are actually, we are in the Caribbean, but we are considered South American in ecology because we broke off from the South American continent and we brought along with us all their ecosystems and all the plants and animals it contained. And um, it's estimated we have maybe a thousand species of spiders. Out of the 120 families of spiders in the world, we have 52. There might be nine more that we suspect are here because we're close to Venezuela, but we just haven't found them yet. So we have a lot. And this doesn't only go for spiders alone. This is for birds, for butterflies, and for reptiles, for plants. Um, the other islands in the Eastern Caribbean, on the other hand, they are oceanic. They rose up from the ocean floor through volcanic activity. So everything that was there, we either brought it there or it migrated. But either way, the, the spider fauna of Trinidad and Tobago and the Eastern Caribbean, it's new. It has never been done before. Now, the thing is, most when we think of spiders, we think of Spider-Man. And we think of Halloween, which is, of course, my favorite time of the year. 
if you didn't know. But spiders actually, these are just some spiders found in Trinidad. Spiders play very important roles in our ecosystem. They are actually biological control agents, so they, they help kill pests, so they're involved in food security. They actually um, they pollinate plants. They're actually indicators of um, the health of ecosystems as indicator species. And, but, these are some more. What we also know about spiders is their silk. And that's probably one of the most f first things we think of when we, when we look at a spider, the silk. And it's used here, it's very pretty in textiles, but it also has a, a great application because spider silk is actually 10 times stronger than Kevlar. Now everybody keeps saying Kevlar, Kevlar. Kevlar is the material that's used to make bulletproof vests. So yes, silk can stop a bullet. Also in engineering, I mean, this is the spider web that we're most accustomed to from storybooks. But to spiders, it's not only the silk, it's how the spider uses its silk. So I don't know if you've ever, when you're cobwebbing at home, and yes, I do cobweb, <laughs> right. <laughs> Just because I am an arachnologist, I, I don't take out the spiders, but I move the webs. You ever notice when you cobweb and you pass back, it's like, wait, I just cobweb. The spider's not really making it, you know, rebuilding the web right there. But the web is so resilient that it's, it's resisting the room. So if I were to throw a stone at this web in one corner, that web would not be totally destroyed at all. Just a small section would be gone. So the spider will just go. It will spend a few minutes, a little bit of silk, and that, that web is as good as new. So imagine if we built our structures like that. Imagine how advanced we would be as well. Spiders also use silk in different ways. They use it to wrap their eggs, the, to wrap their prey, to build retreats, but they also use it as a form of transport. So they would go on a rock or on a branch and release a single line of silk and the wind will catch that, and they will just glide for meters it's on a single strand of silk. So they're, they're, they're pretty amazing animals. Another thing I found as a scientist, on my, on my journey as a scientist, is that it's easy to believe that you know everything. You spent a lot of money, a lot of time studying this subject, and yes, you feel okay, you're the expert, but you don't know everything. And um, this was best shown when I was in Antigua, and I was on a radio program, and somebody called in and said, did you see any tarantulas? And I said, not yet. He said, well, do you know how we hunt for tarantulas? When I was a child, we used to stick a, um, a leaf, a grass, down the hole, and it will climb up, and we used to call that fishing for spiders. And you know what? It worked. Even my mom got in on the act, and this is her observation, right here in Trinidad. Now, in the past, this big spider, which um, your parents might know as machat, was quite common. Then it gave way to the smaller spider, and then to this one, which we know that makes those webs that are difficult to get rid of in the corners of our houses. And the simple reason is this. As the area got more urbanized, there was not enough forest to support the bigger spiders, and then most people had wooden partitions in their homes so that there were a lot of crevices for that tiny spider to, to live in. But now that everything is mostly concrete, it's just ideal for the, the long-legged spiders. So they may not know the science behind it, but it's simple observations like that that spark research. So. I'm very proud of my research. For one thing, it's it's used by governments, it's used by researchers, it's, it's there. So even when I'm gone, it's still going to be there and it's still going to be applied. And my story would not be complete if I didn't highlight at least two things that I'm most proud of. The first was during my master's research, um, where I looked at um, 
the same little spider that you saw in the corner, that's a red cousin, it's a red forest cousin, and the other animals in its environment and in its web. And there's this tiny little endemic bug called Arachnochorus trinitatis. And for decades, people thought that that used to just live off scraps of food from the spider. So it was just there by the spider's goodwill. And uh, my observation has shown that, you know what, it really wasn't depending on the spider at all. It was depending on the web, because it was mostly found in empty webs. So it was using the spider's web to trap its own food and sustaining itself. And the second, um, second research that I'm most proud of is for my PhD, which I'm currently doing. And I look at biodiversity of spiders in natural and disturbed habitats. And by disturbed habitats, I mean by like farmland, cocoa fields, secondary vegetation. Um, secondary vegetation is like um, natural forest and we, we cleared it for plantation and it's been abandoned. So it's slowly going back to its natural state. And in one of the sites, which is in Vesini, which is actually right opposite where they were going to put the Alutron smelter a few years ago, I found 16 species in a tiny area, maybe about a little over the width of this room. And that's the most I've found in any other locality, natural or disturbed. So a lot of people, when they hear like secondary forest, or it's or the stilled area, it's like, okay, we, we could put that to better use, we could put an industry or, or build something on it. But we have to recognize that that has a biodiversity value as well. And we are very lucky because in some other islands like St. Lucia, they, they, their reserves are secondary vegetation because there's very little primary left, but we have both. So we have the best of both worlds and we have to learn to conserve those. So in closing, I have hoped that I've changed your perspective. So you yeah, think twice about, you know, throwing that shoe. <laughs> well, I, I, I can't reach everybody. <laughs> but I'd like to leave you with these take-home messages. Nature has so much to teach us if we take the time to learn and the influences in your life are very diverse. It may be a movie, a conversation, or even the sound of wind through the forest, but it comes in, in all forms and varieties. We just need to take notice and follow our heart. Thank you.